I came home early from a business trip and found an extra pair of men's shoes on the floor. It scared me so much that I tiptoed out with my bag. Close call. Close call. I almost forgot my wife has been dating recently. Chapter 1. I took my luggage and sat down at the pavilion in the neighborhood. Lit a cigarette. Enjoying the view while waiting for my wife to finish up. Next time. I won't take this flight. It got me home two hours early. Didn't leave any time for my wife. This is really ruining their good time on purpose. That guy is my wife's first love. They dated for three years in high school and broke up in college because of long distance. A few months ago, they rekindled their old flame at a class reunion. They say love from the school days is the purest. It's absolutely true. I've seen all their chat records. So affectionate. So sweet. I couldn't help but start shipping them as a couple. Such a good pair of childhood sweethearts. How did they end up not being together? Then, after putting down the phone, I remembered. Wait a minute. That's my wife. All right. All right. You two can play Romeo and Juliet. I guess I'm the certified husband who gets turned into the villain. Just as I was lost in thought, my phone rang. It was the wife of my wife's first love. Where's your wife? I knew she must have noticed her husband disappearing again. I said, don't bother looking. Your husband's at my place. There was silence on the other end. Then she gritted her teeth and said, he lied to me again. Said he was working late. Working in bed more like. How many times this month has it been? How many times? I took out my notes and counted the tally marks. Two sets of five with a line through them. Twelve times. I answered truthfully. They're so sweet together. Has your husband mentioned divorce to you? No. That's odd. My wife's been pressuring him a lot. Last week, she almost couldn't help but confess to me. Scared me half to death. Thought I was going to end up getting divorced before I could even exact my revenge. Can you stop joking? Okay. Okay. I'll stop. Seriously though. I can't wait any longer. I'm ready to act. Everything according to plan. No issues on your end. No issues. Chapter 2. I hung up the phone. I looked at the time. It had only been half an hour. Suddenly, I felt like playing with them. I called my wife. It rang for a long time before she picked up. Who? Husband. I enthusiastically said. Honey, I'm at the neighborhood entrance. Did you miss me? Ah. Lisa couldn't help but scream. Weren't you supposed to arrive in over an hour? I came early. I said. Surprised. Caught off guard. Oh. 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 Surprised. Very surprised. There was a rustling noise on the other end. I guess the two of them were scrambling in a panic. Honey, you've got a lot of luggage. Right. Why don't you rest at the entrance for a bit? I'll come down to get you. Lisa quickly came up with a stalling tactic. Showing some quick thinking. No need. I said. I'm almost at the apartment building. I'll be there in 10 minutes. What? Honey. We're out of soy sauce at home. Can you grab a bottle at the supermarket on your way? Oh. And we're running low on hand soap too. Get lost. I hung up the phone. Chapter 3. I consider myself a kind person. I dawdled a bit on the way, giving them a few extra minutes to prepare. Then, right at the entrance of the building, I ran into her first love. The moment he saw me, he visibly froze. Then he lowered his head and quickly brushed past me. His hair was messy. His eyes were panicked. The buttons on his shirt were misaligned. And his pants were loose. Hey. Just as he was about to step out the door, I called out to him. He froze. Unable to muster the courage to turn back, I suppressed a laugh and pointed at a business card on the ground, you dropped something, buddy. He let out a sigh of relief, picked up the card, and hurried off. In his rush, he dropped his briefcase too, papers scattered all over the floor. Looks like he came straight to my place right after meeting a client. Talk about making every second count. I was almost swept away by the sweetness of their love again. I took the elevator up, went home, and entered the code, the moment I stepped in. I smelled a strong scent of air freshener. Lisa was in a hurry, blocking my way. Her face was flushed, her breathing uneven, and her clothes were messy. What were you doing at home? I dragged my luggage into the bedroom. You look exhausted. Lisa followed closely behind, blocking my view of the bathroom. Seems like they didn't have time to clean up there. Just, just doing some deep cleaning. She said guiltily. The bed was piled with clothes. It seemed she didn't have time to straighten the sheets. So she made it even messier. I sat down on the bed. The blanket was still warm. Do you smell something? I sniffed the air. Smell what? Lisa's expression was unnatural. I don't smell anything. I leaned in closer, pretending to be serious. Something's off. You smell like a man. Her face turned pale instantly. Her throat seemed to be gripped by an invisible hand. And she couldn't utter a word. You used my shower gel, didn't you? I laughed. She let out a breath of relief, feigning anger, and punched me on the chest. You're impossible. Always joking around. Hmm? I raised my eyebrows, what's that red mark on your neck? Just when she had started to relax, my question startled her again. Instinctively, she covered her neck and stammered, 
A mosquito bite, I guess. Mosquitoes in the middle of winter. Then, then maybe it's an allergic reaction. She tightened her collar. Maybe I brushed against some pollen on the way to work. I stared at her, smiling. Soon, beads of sweat appeared on her forehead. Oh, I nodded. I thought someone kissed you. Stop joking. She pushed me, her eyes avoiding mine. You always make these jokes. I'm not joking, I said. While I was away, you've been sneaking around. Lisa was struck by lightning. Her eyes widened, and her lips trembled. I pointed at the table, piled with leftovers. Didn't you say this stuff was unhealthy? As soon as I leave, you start eating it. Lisa's spirit returned. She wiped her forehead. I was busy with work, and with you gone. There was no one to cook for me. Ugh. Why are you scaring me like this? In just a few minutes, I had messed with her three times. She was so flustered that she could barely speak. Seeing her so uncomfortable filled me with a strange satisfaction. I could hardly wait to see what her face would look like when I finally confronted her for real. I admit, I have a bit of a twisted side. Chapter 4 At night, after Lisa finished her shower, she cuddled up to me, seeking affection. A wave of nausea hit me, and I almost couldn't hold back from throwing up. I quickly claimed I was too tired and collapsed onto the bed, pretending to sleep. She didn't suspect anything. After a while, she softly called my name. Seeing that I didn't wake up, she tiptoed to the bathroom. Soon, my phone started vibrating. The little app one installed on her phone sent me all her activity. First love, he didn't suspect anything. Right. Lisa, no, but he's acting a bit crazy. First love, good. I was scared to death today. Lisa, what's there to be scared of? We're both getting divorced soon anyway. First love, wiping sweat. Lisa, did you tell your wife? How much longer will it take? I can't stand this life for another day. First love, I'm preparing. Lisa, preparing. How long has it been? If you don't tell her soon, I'll tell her myself. First love, no, no, please don't. Divorce isn't a small matter. There are a lot of things to discuss slowly. Lisa, I'm giving you one last week. First love, we'll talk about it then. Chapter 5. Only one week left. I rolled over and sat up. I created a group chat with Lisa's parents, her aunt and uncle, and her close friends. Sorry to disturb everyone so late, but here's the thing, our anniversary is coming up, and this weekend I've planned a surprise for Lisa. I'd love for you all to witness it and have a little gathering. Wow. Alex. You're so romantic. Lisa's best friend chimed in. Alex. What anniversary is it? Your wedding anniversary isn't for a while. My mother-in-law asked. It's our 8th anniversary of being in a relationship. I made up on the spot. Mom, you have to come. Let's record a vlog of the whole thing. Can you give us a hint of what you've planned? Lisa's colleague asked. A few flowers and a cake. And I also bought the bag that Lisa has had in her shopping cart for a while but couldn't bring herself to buy. Oh. And please keep this a secret. I want it to be a surprise. Ah. What kind of luck does Lisa have? Did she save the galaxy in her past life? Everyone started discussing excitedly. The atmosphere was so joyful it seemed like it would overflow from the screen. Why are you awake? Lisa came back from the bathroom. My boss called. I waved my phone. I have to go on a business trip this weekend. Won't be back until Tuesday. Another work trip. Lisa pretended to be disappointed. Can't be helped. I pretended to smile bitterly. Life is like a play. The next morning, I saw their latest chat. Lisa, he won't be home this weekend. First love, then I'll come over again. Just make sure you're all clean and ready for me. Lisa. Blushing emoji. They sent this late at night. Almost right as I fell asleep. So eager. Let's see each other this weekend then. Chapter 6. Weekend. Hotel. So excited. So excited. Lisa's best friend was holding flowers. So excited she was stamping her feet. Am I the one who leads the shout? Yes. Lisa's college roommate was double checking the plan. You'll catch Lisa's attention. And we'll set off the confetti. Little brother. Is the camera ready? It's ready. My brother-in-law took a group photo of us, don't worry, I took a photography course in college, so you can leave the recording to me, Alex, it's so thoughtful of you, my father and mother-in-law held my hands, speaking warmly, we're fully confident in leaving Lisa in your care, mom, dad, I promised you before that I'd take good care of Lisa, and that's what I'll do, the gifts are all wrapped, Lisa's colleague, who was handling logistics, said, when are we heading out, everyone looked at me, I glanced down at my phone, half an hour ago, her first love's wife had already told me that her scumbag husband was working late again. If I've timed it right, they should be in the middle of their passionate affair. Let's go. I waved my hand. Everyone, follow me. In that moment, I had the illusion that I was a general from ancient times, leading an army of millions to the north, to eliminate the traitors. Chapter 7. The convoy drove into the neighborhood in grand style. Upstairs, the atmosphere in the elevator was filled with excitement. As soon as we got out, everyone instinctively held their breath. 
The quiet atmosphere felt like a balloon, inflating more and more. Everyone was waiting for that moment of explosion. The sound of the keypad beeping. I deliberately brought the key. The key slowly slid into the lock, gently turning the latch. Lisa's best friend entered first. She tiptoed toward the bedroom. Then she suddenly threw open the door. Lisa. Surprise. She got halfway through the word, then froze. The S sound trailing off like a deflated balloon. Her mind went blank, but the people behind her had already caught up. The second, the third, everyone looked like they had been paused. No movement, no sound, as if it wasn't Lisa lying on the bed, but Medusa. Everyone who saw was petrified. Not a sound. Thud. My brother-in-law dropped the camera, the battery flying a meter away. What's going on? I asked, pretending to be clueless. As I called the police, I walked toward the bedroom. Brother-in-law. My brother-in-law stepped in front of me. Um, um. His face was flushed, his eyes avoiding mine, but he instinctively grabbed my sleeve. I looked straight into his eyes, curious about how he would defend his sister. There might be some misunderstanding. He looked at me almost pleadingly. Don't get violent. Let's talk this through. Misunderstanding. I pretended not to understand. Scanning the room. Everyone lowered their heads in unison. No one explained, but they automatically made way for me. And so, I saw on the messy bed a pale-faced man. Stark naked, looking embarrassed. He tried to run immediately, but the bed was surrounded by people, and his clothes and the pillows were all on the floor. He had nothing to cover himself with. He could only face everyone's judgment, completely exposed. Lisa lay beside him, her face buried in the blanket, her hair a mess, and her exposed leg still trembling uncontrollably. I knew the scene had reached its climax. Generally, there are two ways this could play out when catching a cheater. If I were a hot-blooded man, I would rush up and beat this pair of adulterers without hesitation. If I were a lovesick man, I'd grab Lisa by the collar, no, wait, her collar's on the floor now, I'd shake her by the shoulders and ask why she did this to me, but I'm neither, I'm a scheming man, I'm here to strike at the heart, I kicked her first love in the face and shouted, why are you bullying my wife? Then I tightly embraced Lisa and gently asked, did he force you, why didn't you tell me if you were in trouble? There was a stir in the crowd, and I heard a heavy sigh from Lisa's best friend who was standing closest to me. From everyone's perspective, I had prepared a surprise for my wife, only to witness her cheating at this moment. Not only was my sincerity betrayed, but in that instant, I still chose to believe that my wife was in a difficult situation. What a perfect husband. Now, I held the moral high ground. Lisa, how are you going to play this game with me? Chapter 8. How dare you bully my daughter? My shrewd father-in-law was the first to catch on to my intentions, delivering a fierce slap to Lisa's first love to show his loyalty to me. You beast. I'll beat you to death. With my father-in-law leading the way, my brother-in-law followed up with a punch to his face. Blood instantly splattered from his nose. Then, my brother-in-law grabbed him by the hair and dragged him off the bed. Lisa's first love cried out, reaching for Lisa's hand. Lisa was pulled sideways, the blanket slipping to the floor, leaving most of her body exposed. She screamed, frantically grabbing for the blanket to cover herself. My mother-in-law, seeing this, hurried to help her precious daughter cover up. But my brother-in-law, single-minded as he was, only pulled harder upon hearing Lisa's cries. You still dare to grab my sister? Lisa and my mother-in-law were no match for my brother-in-law's brute strength. In the end, this tug-of-war ended with my brother-in-law's overwhelming victory. Lisa was left completely exposed to the air. I noticed someone in the crowd secretly recording with their phone. I subtly adjusted my position. Not blocking the camera is just basic courtesy. Right. Who called the police? Outside the door. The police had arrived. I quickly stepped forward, grasping the officer's hands, and said in a grief-stricken voice, My wife has been raped. The officer hesitated for a moment, then patted my hand in a gesture of comfort. It wasn't rape. It wasn't rape. Lisa's first love was shocked. Suddenly finding the strength to break free from Lisa's family's beating, we know each other. She invited me here. If you don't believe me, ask her. The officer gave him a disdainful look before turning to Lisa, Do you know him? This was the second dilemma I had set for Lisa. If she denied knowing him, Lisa's first love would be charged with rape, and he would certainly fight back by revealing all the details of their affair. Fighting like cats and dogs, if she admitted to the affair, her testimony would become crucial evidence in our divorce and in my claim for emotional damages. Either way, I wouldn't lose. One by a mile. Now, the pressure was on Lisa. My mother-in-law had found a nightgown for her to wear, and everyone was watching as she seemed to be in a daze. Do you know him? The officer asked again, please answer truthfully. Yes, Lisa nodded. Her first love let out a sigh of relief. My father-in-law's face turned dark, and he immediately slapped her hard across the face. How could I have raised someone like you? I wasn't surprised by this outcome. 
It was obvious they knew each other. Moreover, among the people here were some of Lisa's high school classmates. But the act had to be convincing. I pretended not to believe it, shouting that it was impossible, and ran out of the house. Chapter 9 The second phase of revenge began. I found a gaming hotel and booked it for seven days. Then I turned off my phone. I dug out some games from my favorites that had been gathering dust. Officially entered happy mode. When I got tired of playing, I'd order takeout, watch movies, and chat with experts on Jihu. The days were fulfilling and joyful. For a moment, I felt like I was back in my college days. No one was forcing me to endlessly strive for a bigger house or a higher salary. No one was glaring at me for taking a break. I spent less than 3,000 yuan in seven days. But the happiness I gained was more than the sum of five years of marriage. It's true that you only realize what you've lost once it's gone. If you've never been married, you don't know how awesome the single life is. A week later, I reinstalled WeChat and turned off Do Not Disturb. My phone buzzed for over half an hour. Scrolling through, I saw all the unread messages. I glanced over them briefly. Lisa and her family were going crazy trying to find me. My soon-to-be ex-in-laws said Lisa had completely reformed and that if I was willing to give her another chance, she would never defy me again. They made it sound so convincing. The bystanders, while gossiping, also expressed their sympathy. I scrolled through the updates everyone had been sending me, tracking the real-time dynamics of the Song family. The first day was chaos. It caused quite a stir locally. Various local public accounts and small influencers were reposting and commenting. I was included in the material for why men don't want to get married anymore. On the second day, Lisa's entire family didn't leave the house. The neighborhood's gossip almost drowned them in their own home. On the third day, Lisa's workplace issued a statement. They said Lisa's actions had severely damaged the company's image and reputation. So she was fired. Lisa didn't dare go back to pack her things. The company sent someone to throw all her stuff into the trash. The fourth day, I was thoroughly enjoying myself. Then her family called. Hello, I answered. Alex, you finally picked up the phone. Her father sounded as excited as Columbus discovering the new world. Or like when I got my first pair of basketball shoes, where are you? We'll come to find you. We've really educated Lisa over the past few days. You two still have feelings for each other. Don't. I'll come to you. I interrupted. It's better to clear some things up in person. Okay. Okay. But Alex, you've had so many years together. Don't do anything rash. Chapter 10. So many years of feelings. I used to think that Lisa and I would grow old together, but it wasn't until I saw the chat logs that I realized, all those years, there was always someone else hiding in the cracks of our life. Lisa didn't pursue me because of the steadfast and ambitious personality she claimed to admire or because I looked handsome while working, those were just empty reasons. The truth was, her first love was flirting with another girl, and she couldn't stand it, so she rushed to find someone else as a way to get back at him. Three years later, we got married, and she moved up the wedding by half a year. Not because of better timing, but just to get married the day before her first love, to spite him. A couple of years ago, Lisa got pregnant, but without consulting me, she had an abortion. She said it was because her career was on the rise, and we were still young, so we could have kids later. But in reality, her first love had moved back to his hometown, and they reconnected. In romance novels, there's always a plot where the unforgettable first love comes back into the picture, and they get back together after years apart. But if you want to stay true to your love, then stay true. Don't get married if you're not committed. You two are so remarkable, so noble. You both play out your drama, and then drag me down with you. It's utterly disgusting. My brother-in-law was already waiting at the entrance of the neighborhood. As soon as he saw me, he eagerly came to greet me. The kid was wearing a hat and mask, looking like he didn't have the face to show himself. On the way, he tried to speak several times but couldn't say anything, eventually just patting me lightly on the back. His parents also looked at me with guilt. After all, I was now unshaven, with sunken eyes, and from staying up all night playing games, my eyes were bloodshot. I looked like someone deeply hurt by love. Alex, this was Lisa's fault. We've already scolded her harshly. Do you think you can? I raised my hand to stop her father. My voice hoarse. Where is she? It's better to talk things out in person. Yes. Yes. Alex is right. Let the young people sort it out themselves. Alex is a good kid. I trust he'll handle this properly. Her mother said. You can scold her or hit her but life still has to go on. I pushed open the bedroom door. Lisa was curled up on the bed, staring out the window. When she saw me come in, she flinched and didn't dare look at me. It had been days since we last saw each other, and she had become much more haggard. Her lips were dry, her eyelids swollen. Clearly, she had cried a lot. Why was she crying? Was she regretting it? Regretting not being more careful, so I wouldn't have found out. Right. Alex has something to say to you. Make sure you say it properly. Her mother reminded her. Clearly worried, do you remember what I told you earlier? 
The door closed. The room suddenly fell silent. Lisa kept staring out the window, but her knuckles turned white as she gripped the blanket. Let's cut to the chase, I said. How do you plan to handle this? After a moment, Lisa finally spoke. This is my fault. But we should still separate. This is the result of their so-called scolding. But I wasn't surprised at all. I know Lisa's personality too well. She doesn't respond to force, and the more you push her, the more she'll resist. Besides, the love she's dreamed of for half her life is right in front of her. How could she possibly let go? But right now, she still didn't have enough momentum. I needed to add more fuel to the fire. What if I don't agree? She looked up at me, her voice soft. Alex, a forced relationship won't end well. Oh, how interesting. I laughed. Three years of dating, five years of marriage, a legally recognized marriage, and now it's a forced relationship. When did I ever force you? Did I hold a knife to your throat and force you to marry me? I'm sorry. Lisa closed her eyes, tears streaming down her face. I can compensate you if you're willing to divorce. At that moment, her father, who had been eavesdropping outside, couldn't hold back any longer. He rushed in and slapped her. How dare you talk nonsense? Divorce. So you can go live with that bastard. Let the neighbors laugh at us. Lisa covered her face, screaming, I want a divorce. He's my first love, my true love. My youth already has regrets. I don't want to live the rest of my life in regret. Rage burned in my chest, making my heart ache with every beat. You ungrateful girl. Say that again. Her father raised his hand to hit her again. I said, fine, I'll let you go. But are you sure he's willing to divorce for you? He definitely will. You don't understand us. Really. I couldn't help but sneer. This only fueled Lisa's determination. I'll prove to you how much he loves me. All right. You'd better prove it to me. Chapter 11. The day after I left Lisa's house, her parents kicked her out, publicly declaring that they no longer had a daughter. The old couple cares a lot about their reputation. So this outcome didn't surprise me. But now, all of Lisa's escape routes have been cut off. Her unforgettable first love has become her only salvation. But unlike Lisa, I left her first love plenty of room to maneuver. First, his wife is still pretending to be completely unaware. One, because she's out of town. So even though things are in an uproar here, she should remain oblivious. Two, she and Lisa's first love don't share the same social circles. So there's no one to spill the beans. So, even if Lisa can't leave her house for a while, the impact on her first love is close to zero. He's still going to work, still drinking with friends, still sleeping, still eating. Just to ease his conscience, he's tested the waters with his wife a few times. The reason he's so afraid of his wife is that he relies on her for his livelihood. A couple of years ago, he went all in on stocks, lost everything, and lost his job. But with his good looks and smooth talk, he managed to latch onto a wealthy woman. His wife is the only child in her family, and they own two factories. In recent years, even though Lisa's first love has taken on a nominal second-in-command role in the company, and his father-in-law has shown signs of giving him more power, the stocks, however, are still in his wife's name. Lisa's first love may look like he's living large, but he can be replaced at any moment. Whether he's a man or a dog is entirely up to his wife. So, the million-dollar annual salary and bright future he boasted about to Lisa are heavily exaggerated. No wonder Lisa, even if she has to leave with nothing, is determined to divorce me, a domineering CEO, unforgettable first love, and a reunion after years apart. All the romantic drama tropes are there, according to romance novel logic. I, the second male lead, am destined to be crushed under the hero's feet, but unfortunately, reality isn't a romance novel. Even Lisa's first love for her is questionable. People involved in the situation often can't see the truth. Lisa thinks her first love is already plotting a grand divorce plan. In reality, it's clear to me, her first love just wants to keep the stability at home while enjoying the excitement outside. His wife is out of town, giving him children. His first love is by his side, risking everything for him. He spends his wife's money and enjoys the love of his first love. He seems to have taken all the good things in the world for himself. Chapter 12 As soon as the cooling-off period for the divorce ended, Lisa and I quickly went to the civil affairs office to finalize the divorce. Lisa signed the papers quickly, without any hesitation. She even had her makeup done. It looked like she had a date lined up afterward. Watching her leave without a trace of reluctance, I extinguished the last bit of pity I had. I turned around and called her first love's wife telling her that today was the day to wrap things up. At exactly 6 in the evening, the app notified me that Lisa had ordered takeout and even requested the delivery person to bring a pack of cigarettes. I put on my work clothes, pretended to be the delivery guy, and knocked on the door. The door opened, and Lisa's expression looked like she had seen a ghost. Why are you here? I smiled slightly. You two are still together. Lisa immediately tried to shut the door. What's it to you? I quickly wedged my foot in the door. 
Lisa pushed against it several times, but when she couldn't budge it, she got angry. Alex, we're already divorced. You have no right to interfere in my private life. Her first love, hearing the commotion, came to the door. When he saw me, he couldn't help but shudder, probably remembering the fear of getting his face punched. You better leave, or I'm calling the police. Lisa snarled, baring her teeth. Her twisted expression disgusted me, so quick to change her tune for the next man. Go ahead, call the police. You might as well report me for trespassing, and then have the owner of this apartment come and hold me accountable. At these words, her first love's face changed dramatically. He quickly held Lisa back and said, Forget it. You two were once married. There's no need to make things ugly. I had to give this pretty boy some credit. He's quick on his feet, still trying to play the good guy at a time like this. I smiled. See, your new husband is sensible. Her first love gave a forced smile. I continued, in return, I'll give your wife a compliment too, for being such a good man. I pulled out my phone, read out his wife's number, and showed him the video of the affair. Shall I send this video? Give your wife a little shock. Lisa sneered, Alex, I thought you'd come up with something better. Go ahead and send it. He's about to get divorced anyway, so there's nothing to be afraid of. I gasped. I'd never seen a mistress so brazen before, just as I was about to nod in agreement. Her first love grabbed my hand. Don't, men. Let's talk this through. Lisa's smile froze on her face. Juan, what do you mean? He ignored her completely. Do you need money? I can give you some. Name your price. Just delete the video. I laughed. Aren't you in a hurry to get divorced? His expression turned sour. Lisa gritted her teeth, grabbing his arm to confront him. The moment he turned his head slightly, I made a move to send the video. Sure enough, he quickly turned back. I was on one side, Lisa on the other. The tug of war made her first love look miserable. Finally, he couldn't take it anymore and roughly shoved Lisa aside. Can you just shut up for a moment? Can't you see I'm dealing with something here? Lisa fell to the ground and didn't get up for a long time. Her heart must have shattered along with her pride. I added fuel to the fire and began reading out their steamy messages. Lisa, you're the one I've always loved. If it weren't for the kids, I would have divorced her a thousand times by now. It was all my fault back then. You have no idea how much I regret it. I regret it so much it's eating me alive. Now, the heavens have given me a second chance, and I'll treasure it, holding your hand and never letting go. I love you, Lisa. There's no man in this world who could love you as much as I do. I read a few lines, then paused clearing my throat, almost choked on the cheesy lines, stop, stop, his face turned from pale to red, just name your price, I don't want your money, don't think everyone's like you, obsessed with money, I said, now, I'm giving you two choices, either you hit her, or I'll send this to your wife, you decide, almost the moment the words left my mouth, he slapped Lisa without hesitation, smack, the sharp sound echoed in the air, the world suddenly fell silent, Lisa turned her head away, her hair falling over her face, and a red handprint slowly appeared on her pale cheek. She sat there, frozen, and slowly, tears began to stream down her face. Her body started to tremble. I squatted down, grabbed her chin, and looked her in the eye. Word by word, I said, is this the love you wanted to prove to me? The great love you're willing to ruin your life for? I really thought you meant more to him. Chapter 13. After I finished speaking, it was time to make my exit. I had just sent the signal. Her first love's wife burst through the door her voice full of rage, Juan, how dare you keep a mistress behind my back? She stormed in with a few strong men, grabbed the pretty boy, and slapped him hard, when we got married, what did you promise me? You live off my money, and you dare to cheat on me. Divorce, we're getting divorced today, get out of my house. The men grabbed the pretty boy by his limbs, he turned his head to look at me, yelling, you said you wouldn't send it. I shrugged, my hand slipped, then, his wife delivered a swift kick to his crotch, there was a dull thud. I could have sworn I heard the sound of something cracking. His eyes bulged, his body curled up, and the veins on his neck stood out. His face turned so red it looked like it might start bleeding. It wasn't just me. Every man in the room instinctively clenched their thighs. The pretty boy lay on the floor, curled up like a shrimp. Stop playing dead. Get up. Now. Immediately. We're going to the civil affairs office. Wife. I'm sorry. He managed to squeeze out a few words, but his wife wasn't having any of it. And why would she? After holding back for so long, a few words from him wouldn't change her mind. He reached out to grab her foot, but she stomped on his hand with her high heel. Wife. Seeing that she was about to leave, he quickly scrambled up to chase after her. The room soon cleared out, leaving just me and Lisa. Aren't you going to confront him, make him choose between his wife and you? I asked softly, are you really going to let this go? Hearing this, Lisa got up and ran out after them. Chapter 14. And so, on a bustling street in the night market. People soon witnessed a curious scene. 
a woman walking briskly in front, followed closely by a man limping. His hands clasped together as he repeatedly apologized. Behind the man was another woman, hands on her hips, demanding, which part of what you told me is true, do you want me or her? Make it clear. It was obvious to everyone that it was a mistress being caught. The onlookers loved this kind of drama. People began to gather around. A few bystanders, eager for more excitement, started live streaming on their phones. Wife, please calm down. Juan was almost on his knees, begging, you already have a stomach condition. Getting upset isn't good for your health. Such a sweet talker. His wife sneered, you're just saying that so that if I die of anger, you can marry this mistress. The pretty boy looked like he was about to cry, no, how could I? It was all her seduction. Lisa, already irritated by being ignored, was now even more enraged. You, Zhao, explain what you mean by saying I seduced you. But the pretty boy continued to ignore her, pleading with his wife, forgive me this time, there won't be a next time. The children need a complete family. His wife retorted, even dogs know they can't serve two masters. I've spent all this money on you, and even if you were a dog, you'd at least know who your master is. Divorce. She spotted Lisa and her anger flared even more, and you put my pajamas on her. Damn it, Juan, you're really something. Hearing this, the pretty boy turned and ripped the pajamas off Lisa. Rip, in the blink of an eye, Lisa was stripped bare. Even I didn't see that coming. The pretty boy held up the pajamas like a trophy and offered them to his wife. Wife, your things will always be yours. His wife was left speechless. Chapter 15. Are you sure this will work? His wife and I were in a hotel room. Don't get the wrong idea, it was purely a strategic meeting. From the room's window, we had a clear view of his house. Don't you trust me? I smiled, we've worked together for so long. Hasn't everything gone exactly as planned? I want to make sure he doesn't get a single penny. She was still a bit worried. Don't worry. I had her tell the pretty boy that she wouldn't divorce him as long as he cut off all ties with Lisa. He was quick to agree. Even offered to record the entire negotiation to prove his sincerity. Knowing him, the things he'd say during that recording would be incredibly cruel. And Lisa, with her reputation in shambles and everyone turning against her, with her personality, there was no way she'd just let it go. The negotiation was scheduled for today. I lit a cigarette, leaning by the window, waiting patiently. Hours passed, and there was still no movement from the house. His wife wanted to send a message to check in, but I stopped her. I had a feeling something big was about to happen. Sure enough, several police cars came rushing to the scene, covered in blood. Lisa calmly got into one of the police cars. A cornered animal will bite, and a cornered tiger is even more dangerous. Chapter 16 The November 2nd Lover's Quarrel Murder Case Due to a romantic dispute, Zhao invited Song to his home for negotiations. But Song came prepared and drugged him during the conversation. Song then killed Zhao after being arrested. Song remained calm, stating that Zhao's betrayal was the reason for her actions, and this was the price he had to pay. A small section in the newspaper, and that's how this love story ends. I lit the newspaper on fire, watching the ashes scatter in the cold wind. In the distance, the lights of thousands of homes twinkled. Tonight, the moon was bright, and the stars were few, 